Uh, welcome to Landcare in Action stream of the National Landcare Virtual Conference for 2021. My name is Andrew Scott, uh, Bush Care Officer for North Sydney Council. If you have any questions, can you please ask them during the presentation as there'll be a limited amount of time to address them at the end. Uh, I would now like to introduce the, uh, the, uh, this session on wild wellbeing with our speakers, Megan Lee and Jaden Gunn. Please start your presentation now, Megan and Jaden. Thanks, Andrew. So, hi everyone, I'm Megan and I'm on Gubby Gubby Country. And hello everyone, I'm Jaden and I'm on Gamilaroi Country. And we're from Intrepid Landcare. And today we'll be talking about personal and community resilience in a disrupted world. But first we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians across all of the lands on which we meet today and pay our respects to elders past, present, present and emerging and acknowledge their continued connection to land and water and country and also acknowledge their continued resilience in the face of big change. We'd also like to acknowledge those of you who've joined us today who may have a previous or current experience of mental health challenge and acknowledge that these times have been tough on many of us in different ways and that in hearing our presentation today, you may experience some triggering around some memories or emotions or feelings um, as we will be referring to themes such as suicide and other mental health challenges. Now, Jaden and I both have a lived experience of these things, so we do invite you to please go gently through this presentation, look after your needs, and please, if you do feel like you need it, please seek some professional support. So, personal and community resilience. Well, I think we all went down this slide last year. And we've all been tested in lots and lots of different ways and some people quite enjoyed and thrived on the ride and, and some not so much. And to be honest, I don't believe that any of us have remained untouched by the Black Summer fires. I know that my relationship with the smell of smoke has gone from romantic childhood memories around the campfire to one of complete embodied dread um, and worry about what catastrophic loss may be just around the corner. And to add to that, you know, we've got the reality of a changing climate and ongoing ecological loss. We've got things like the ongoing destruction and injustice that is happening in the world. And so you could be forgiven for thinking that, yeah, the future looks pretty grim. But I think despite the overwhelming doom and gloom at times, Intrepid Landcare and Landcare in general has taken a proactive and adaptive approach to situations as they've emerged. And what these times have really allowed us to do is to slow down and be in deep reflection and conversation about what is going on and what is happening. And this has allowed us to really unpack just what it is about land care that supports our, our personal and our collective resilience and well-being. And ask that question, you know, what do we really need? What do we need to let go of that is not serving us anymore? And what do we need to let go of that can truly move us forward in healthier and more united ways? And also, what do we need to embrace so that we can be more resilient to the continuing challenges we are going to face into the future? Now, in 2020, we sat together virtually to try and make sense of what was going on in the world. And we explored these questions with some respected elders of the Landcare movement. And I'd really love to acknowledge Uncle David King, Bill and Leslie Piggott, Pam Robinson, Kay Rodden, Martin Royds and Terry Hubbard, and all of the young intrepid Landcare people that joined us in this conversation. Because what this actually allowed us to do was really get clear on how we can look after each other through these times and how we can move forward together. And when we first set up Intrepid Land Care in 2015, it really was in response to that gap of youth participation in land care. And when we refer to young people, we're really talking about late teens to 30 something year olds. And for those of you who don't know much about us, Intrepid Landcare is an adventurous organisation that supports young people and communities to connect and collaborate and do stuff that matters. And stuff that matters can be a cause or an issue, an interest that makes a difference. And we do this by offering a range of um, 
of community engagement programs and support a, a growing national community of practice of young leaders around the country. And one of our core offerings is a weekend long leadership retreat, which steps young people through an immersive journey of self growth, reflection and community action. But today, Intrepid Landcare really embraces Landcare as a community to learn, grow, heal and support each other while looking after Australia's biodiversity and landscapes. And really, this is what wild wellbeing means for us. It is, you know, it's, it's that idea that when we are healing the land, when we're healing country, we're also healing ourselves. And while well-being starts with self and finding a tribe to belong, that enables a space to connect with country and nature and develop a sense of meaning and purpose in our lives. And all of these things combined are known to contribute to our overall re resilience and our overall well-being. But starting with self, <clears throat> well, if we're not well in ourselves, we just simply can't show up in the world in the ways that we'd like to. This affects the way we communicate, our relationships, our energy focus and ability to navigate conflict and weather the storms. And all of this requires a real inner grounding. But developing a real strong sense and self of self-awareness is a powerful pathway to develop a deepening understanding of what we really need to navigate our triggers and our stress and conflict and external disruption and, and design ways to look after our personal well-being. And everybody's recipe is different. Um, when we know ourselves and what we need to process emotions in healthy ways and we actually take responsibility for that, we can show up and be present and navigate the challenges from a far more empowered place. Now, Intrepid Landcare does support young people to develop this awareness and encourages self-care practices that support young people to navigate life's challenges and avoid burnout, particularly in their leadership journey. So what do young people use? Uh, this is a list of some of the really common things that come up in these sessions, but things like yoga and meditation and rest, time at the gym and time in nature, and a practice of journaling and gratitude, as well as asking for help and talking to friends all make a regular appearance in these sessions. <clears throat> Now, one of the core elements of Intrepid Landcare, as indicated by our name, is our desire to explore nature and give back in fun and adventurous ways. Now, this has been criticised more so in our beginnings of our work from a safety perspective, but with a deep sense of responsibility, we have navigated this resistance because we know just how important this is for fostering a deepening sense of connection with young people and the natural world. And also what it offers us in terms of our personal and collective well-being. Having an adventure and an enriching and fun experience in nature provides an amazing opportunity for young people to connect with the natural world, as well as develop and strengthen their social connections. You know, um, and now more than ever, this is so important in our lives. A growing body of research shows the ongoing positive mental health benefits of being connected with nature. When people are, they, they experience lower levels of stress and anxiety and overwhelm. And evidence also suggests really interestingly that the higher the quality of nature, the higher the impact on our health and well-being. So on the flip side, this is really important to consider when going and working in highly damaged and degraded environments. When we are faced with the destruction of the environment, are more aware of what's been happening in the past, and experience things like ongoing and more frequent natural disasters, we can be triggered into despair or grief at any moment. And many people are. In fact, climate anxiety, eco-anxiety is very real. And while these challenges continue, there will be ongoing trauma. So we need these spaces and places for ongoing processing and healing. Um, well, spending time in nature doesn't heal everything at once. It certainly provides a crack or this circuit breaker for this to occur. And this was definitely my experience last year. Um, yep, I wanted to get off the Corona coaster. <laughs> it was really challenging for me. And, and in reality, like a series of stacked, intense 
um, personal circumstances pushed me beyond my tipping point and I actually didn't want to be here anymore and I wanted to end things. But luckily I had enough in me to ask for help and I had my intrepid family and people in the movement that I could lean on um, to start to to process things and part of that processing was time in nature this was a really big part of my healing every time every time I was in a dark place all I knew was I needed to get outside to move my body to process things as much as I could and even in the darkest times that just was enough to provide that crack where I could start to insert other things that helped me to 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 push on to course correct and just get back on track in fact one of the biggest things I did was I hiked for seven days by myself on Gari which is Fraser Island and I just cried the entire way and it was amazing it was what I needed and to be honest I came back feeling more alive and absolutely less ashamed of what I had actually experienced so Sometimes you've just got to listen to your body and what your heart and your mind wants and just completely let go of the ego. Being in nature was a big part of my healing and I think that's why I'm even more passionate about protecting it. And so while the world can be extremely overwhelming, it's that taking time in pristine places, whether you're on your own or in community and having fun and enriching and rejuvenating, rejuvenating experiences in nature is so important and in fact that's what many of the intrepid land care groups chose to do throughout COVID so that they could maintain those social connections and that sense of well-being in their community but unfortunately research is still suggesting that loneliness is on the rise and even more so through COVID and that having low levels or poor quality social connections can be just as detrimental to our health if not more so to smoking, high blood pressure and obesity. And it puts people at risk of depression, anxiety, and of course, suicide. So um, it also compromises our health system, our immune system, and our ability to recover from illness. Uh, so Intrepid Land Care really provides a space for young people to not only connect with nearby peers and over, over common values and interests, but also supports intergenerational connection, which enables a supportive environment for young people to ask for help and to learn and grow. And many young people come to Intrepid Land Care sharing just how much social isolation they have experienced in their lives and walk away with a renewed access to a community they finally feel like they belong. We believe everybody has something to offer no matter where they're at on their journey. And working with First Nations communities has really taught us a lot about the ways that we belong in community and the ways we belong with the natural world. And these experiences have been incredibly healing and allowed us to explore different ways of working together and also co-create new stories where we all feel like we belong. When we sat together with our elders last year and explored that question around what we needed to let go of, it was really heartening to know that a lot of the things we all agreed on were very human. Things like um, feeling like a failure or rushing all the time or stress and overwhelm or being these high performing human beings, but, um, you know, which also obviously leads to burnout, but things also like guilt of what's happened in the past and the belief that all is lost and that we are powerless. It was coming together um, and navigating these challenges that helped us build our community and deepen our sense of belonging. Um, and doing that in an authentic way so we were all seen and heard exactly as we were, exactly where we're at. And we're all capable of creating these environments and land care is an amazing place for this to occur. Now, having a sense of meaning and purpose in our lives is known to support our quality of life. And land care gives many of us a place to really explore what that means for us how we can contribute in unique and personal ways and whether that's taking on more creative projects or being a teacher and mentor for someone or sharing our stories with the world or directly looking after the land, of course, it is all needed and it is all wanted and everybody has something to offer. 
So when we explored that question, then what do we need to embrace in order to move forward? It was evident that we all needed to slow down and to look at and listen to country and live from a place of generosity and let go of this competitiveness and scarcity thinking and actually share our resources and knowledge. And also to see the beauty that still exists in the world and embrace the idea that we are one big family. Sometimes a messy one that no one understands and has lots of weird cousins and periodically goes through an identity crisis, but that's okay. That's just land care. Now, the fact is, we actually all need each other to get through these times. And we need these places and spaces and connections in our life to be able to navigate what the future may hold. And for many of us, land care provides this island of sanity in a disrupted world. Growing up, I had often felt like a black sheep. My interests didn't align with those in my friends and family. And for a long time, I felt alone. My feeling of incompleteness came as a result of the uncertainty in my life. And that uncertainty was chaos. I feared what I did not know. And what I felt as though I did not know was where I belonged. My life was certainly chaotic. I was a negative person that dwelled in both nostalgia and fantasy throughout most of my youth. What if was one of the biggest driving forces both behind the decline in my mental health and its redirection towards becoming my best self. I threw away hopes and dreams for a simple place in society. I settled for a dead end job, a toxic relationship and an unadventurous lifestyle, ignoring my basic wants and needs as a human, along with my deepest passions and desires to engage in them. I had always been more of a dreamer than a doer, but the worst part was believing that was all I was. I became severely depressed and became comfortable in my sadness, which in the end landed me in the emergency ward of a hospital after an attempt at taking my life. I sat in my hospital bed, again alone. I wasn't visited by friends, nor by family. I was truly lost. That was until a disgruntled nurse took a rather effective yet harsh approach in addressing my current situation. How dare you, she says. What gives you the right to throw everything away? Have you even tried living? I was so shocked by her anger, her lack of care for my sensitive situation, that those words stuck with me. They, they echoed in my mind long after, acting as a beneficial force behind both my motivation and kept my mind focused when it was led astray by negativity. Before leaving the hospital, I promised myself that I would start living in a way that I'd always wanted, in a way that was meaningful. I made the decision to find myself find my place in the world and dedicate myself to it entirely. I thought over what I'd loved most, what I was most passionate about, and that was nature, more specifically birds. I immersed myself with them and their environment for the next 12 months until that wasn't enough. By this stage, I had not only been in a hyper-focused state of learning in a bid to understand everything I could about our native bird life and their ecology, but I had also been a passionate aviculturalist, a bird keeper for 14 years prior, having kept and bred about 90% of our native parrots, lorikeets and cockatoos by the age of 20. I absolutely adored them. They'd given me so much in life. They'd given me a, a positive redirection and I wanted to give back. Over my year of intense study and the many years of casual study prior, I'd seen countless stories coming from the world of conservation. The war against extinction was well underway for so many and I wanted to join the fight against it. I thought long and hard about how I could get involved. I didn't have any tertiary education to gain employment in such a competitive field of work, but I certainly had a measurable passion and was undoubtedly knowledgeable. How could I utilize this and direct it in a way that was meaningful? And then I ran into Midlock and Lanker's former coordinator, Vanessa Kane, at a local bird watchers meeting. He told me to get in contact with Tracy Burke, Midlock and Lanker's new and current coordinator at the time, and after doing so, I was to attend their next meeting, which so happened to be a bird survey. I was so ex excited to share my knowledge with everyone. And I was ecstatic, uh, ecstatic at the possibility of helping contribute to science and the bird life that I was so passionate about. The surveys went unbelievably well. Not only was I praised for my passion and knowledge, but I had felt a new feeling I had not felt before. I felt as though I belonged entirely. 
Tracy also gave me a heads up on a possible opportunity of employment with them in the months following that she encouraged me to apply for. So on that day, right then and there, it was settled. I was to be a part of the Midlock and Landcare family. And soon enough, I was selected as Midlock and Landcare's regional vertebrate pest animal coordinator, an opportunity that I took full advantage of. And as a result, saw my knowledge and experience diversify. Being surrounded by supportive, like-minded people doing incredible things for our environment saw a huge positive change in my mental health. And to finally understand what it was like to belong gave me an entirely new appreciation for life. I became motivated to make a difference. I rallied in purpose and I had ordered the chaos in my life by mapping the meaning. And from this journey, I've been increasingly inspired to support others the way I was and continue to be in my Lancaster journey. I'll have to wrap up soon, Jaden. Yep. A short while after starting my role with Midlock and Lancare, I was given the opportunity to represent them as a delegate at our last national conference, which is where I met Naomi Edwards, who had spotted me from across the hall at the welcoming ceremony. We got to talking and she suggested that I come along to a gathering of other young, uh, young like-minded individuals passionate about the community and the environment. And so I did, did just that. Honestly, I was blown away. I never experienced to ex expected to experience such enthusiasm, such positive energy and such unity all crammed into a tiny upstairs area of a Brisbane bar. It was inspiring and life-changing. From there, I contributed as much as I was able. I did slip away after coming back to continue my work, but I kept coming back to be supported by this unified team and, until I felt confident in my ability, ability to really contribute. A confidence that rapidly grew like a nurtured seedling under the, under the guidance of Intrepid Landcare. Looking back now on my journey, I'm both proud of the person I've become and grateful for the support Landcare has given me in order to become this person. I've been given so much opportunity to grow throughout my journey. And due to this now, I now possess the ability to offer the same to others. I've certainly achieved more than ever. I ever thought I was capable of. In fact, the top goals I'd set for myself in life I've achieved. The fantasies I used to ponder are now my reality. I've designed projects for the glossy black cockatoo, the species I'm most passionate about. And as of the 16th of August, I begin my new role as Central New South Wales Woodland Bird Project Coordinator. <laughs> Um, I had, oh, sorry, <laughs> you've lost me. Yes, Jaden, we've um, pretty much run, up. we're pretty much yeah. run to time. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. So, um, I'll skip to the ending questions. So in leaving, in closing today, we'd like to throw these questions to you, the audience, an opportunity to reflect on what we have discussed here today. What are you willing to let go of? And what are you willing to embrace? Wow, thanks, uh, Megan and Jaden. That was really a heartfelt um, uh, presentation. Uh, we, we didn't really have that many questions. We just had lots of um, praise and shout outs from all your friends and a lot of people identifying with the way you, you, you feel. And um, I'm afraid we've run out of time for questions as we got it, uh, we're backed up against the next session. So I'll. Um, have to um, just thank you for your presentation and I and, uh, hope some everyone got something out of that. Thank you, Jaden and Megan. Thank Thanks, you. Andrew. Uh, we'll now go to a short uh, break, a five-minute five break, and please select your next session uh, to begin.